Well, as we get into our first guest of the night, thanks so much for joining us here on San Diego Sports Leader Double X 1090. We'll uh, motor out to the Western Exterminator Hotline, our weekly chat with the fine assistant coach of the San Diego State Basketball Aztecs. That is one Mark Fisher joins us on Double X 1090. Mark, welcome. How are you tonight? Coach, I am grand. How are you, my friend? Uh, doing well, doing well. Uh, USD, uh, they had a nice win tonight over an NAIA opponent, Arizona Christian, and uh, their next uh, game will be on Saturday night, the city championship to take on the Aztecs there at Viejas Arena at 7 o'clock. You guys have had a kind of a, a nice uh, uh, little breather here after that nice win last week, 84-70 to 70 at home against Santa Barbara. You guys have been able to kind of, you know, uh, focus on some things, and I would imagine – uh, a lot of the players going through finals right now. Yeah, it was a perfect time for a break, Coach. We gave the guys two days off, which they haven't had since, you know, we started school in September. I think they appreciated it, and hopefully they uh, spent the day studying and not sleeping. But it also gave the coaches an opportunity to watch a lot of, a lot of film. What we did was we took home two DVDs, one with every offensive possession we've had all year, broken down into what play or whether it was transition. We watched all of those. And we watched every defensive possession broken down, if it was a ball screen or chasing a baseline screen or a post touch. And it really helped our staff uh, kind of pinpoint some things we needed to work on, and then we implemented that the last three days in practice. So hopefully there will be some real improvement in some areas of, of weakness for the team. Mark, uh, let's go back and talk a little bit about that win over Santa Barbara. You'd brought up uh, a point last week. Over the years, uh, Coach Williams up there, the Gauchos, uh, you guys have hooked up in some pretty good ball games with them. We sure have. He's one of the finest coaches on the West Coast. He does a fantastic job. And it was, you know, it was a good game, Coach. Boswell hit seven threes. I, I've got a bad taste in my mouth from it, to be honest, from a coaching standpoint. Uh, to give up that many points in the second half and let a team shoot over 50% is, in my opinion, unforgivable, and that's what we did. And we've been really hard on the guys the last, you know, two games. We've had bad second half defensively, and you know better than most. There's certain games you can, you can get away with that, and, there, and at, at some point down the line it's going to catch up to you. So, we watched a ton of film. Coach Williams had a great game plan. Uh, it was a really fun game. There are always good games with Santa Barbara. Uh, and we learned from it, and hopefully we'll have carryover. Hey, Mark, I wanted to ask you about the young guy that transferred in a mid-year last year from Virginia, uh, a young kid up the road from Elsinore High School in Wildemar, uh, James Johnson. He's been practicing with you guys. Now, will he be eligible at the beginning of second semester? He will, Coach, and I think – the date, the for sure date is up in the air. I don't know if he'll be able to play Point Loma. I don't know if it's going to be in Hawaii. But it's the, as soon as we get his grades posted, he's going to be eligible to compete. And as you said, he's been practicing since the beginning of the year. Uh, he looks good. We're going to have some decisions to make in the middle with three very talented and very capable big guys with him, Deshaun, and Skyler. Yeah, that's what I was going to ask. I mean, is he a guy that can vie uh, for immediately uh, playing? I think he's going to have a chance. You know, we're going to give him, him an opportunity. And they each do things a little bit different. You know, none of them are the same player coach. So a guy like Deshaun it has better feet. He has an amazing motor. He's more athletic. He's a little skinnier. Skyler's a great shot blocker. James is the strongest, the most physically strong. He's also... Maybe you could say, maybe this would be an argument, but you could say he might be the best one-on-one -on -one in the post on offense. So they all have such a unique skill set. They'll all be used um, to, probably depending on matchups, Coach, honestly. I think you could see one guy play 25 minutes one game, one guy play 25 the next game. And the best thing about that trio, they're all selfless kids. And I think whenever they're called on, they're going to play as hard as they can for as many minutes as they're asked, whether it's 40 or 4. We're visiting with Mark Fisher, the assistant basketball coach, San Diego State, joining us on the Western Exterminator Hotline on Double X 1090. Uh, every team, no matter how good you are, there's always uh, something a coaching staff is concerned about. What are you guys concerned about going forward with this ball club? Well, offensively, it's the same thing it was, Coach, when you and I started doing these interviews. It's taking care of the ball. We're a couple 
turnovers too many a game right now. I'd like it to be between 10 and 12 max. I think we're closer to 13. Uh, so that's the sticky point for us offensively. I think our concepts are good. We have very skilled guys. We just got to value that ball every possession because one possession could be the difference. And defensively, you know, ball screen defense, as we talked about last week, is such a key component to success now in college basketball. We haven't been as good this year as I had hoped. I kind of anticipated we'd be at elite level right now with so many returners. We still have we still have ways to go in that regard. So I'd say ball screen defense and taking care of the ball are the two biggest uh, areas of improvement, Coach. But, you know, how coaches are. We could probably name 20. Yeah, you know, one of the things I'd throw out, Mark, from, you know, watching the game so far on television uh, is maybe if you get into conference, you know, being able to score consistently with somebody down on the block. You guys are so good on the perimeter, and you got Jamal Franklin who can, you know, break down a defense and obviously give your big guys some easy layups because they've got to, uh, you know, try to cut him off as he's driving to the bucket. But I would think just, you know, when, when teams can maybe do a nice job of controlling uh, the guards on a given night, being able to score consistently down low. Yeah, absolutely. And the thing – The way we've adjusted that so far is we've actually put our guards in some unique spots to post them up. We posted Jamal up a lot. We put J.J. in there in spots. But you're right. At the end of the day, you'd like to have a big guy, a true post, to throw it to with his back of the basket. I think Deshaun can do that some. Skyler's coming along, and maybe James Johnson will be a guy that can really deliver in that area. Hey, how much do you guys work uh, during practice or maybe even over the course of the week uh, attacking a zone defense? You know, at this point, Coach, it's semi-scout specific. You know, at the beginning of the year, we would do it every couple days, and then going into Syracuse, we did it 10 straight days. (laughs) So now now with one or two games a week, we kind of tailor practice to what we're going to see on the short-term horizon. And with USD coming up, they play a 3-2 zone, uh, a handful of possessions a game, so we have worked uh, on zone defense the last couple of days and we will continue to the rest of the week. Yeah, when you, you go against uh, Syracuse zone and you're getting prepared, you need to have about seven guys playing that zone <laughs> defense in practice, don't you? Exactly. You need to throw six or seven out there. And, you know, the, the good thing about that, Coach, it didn't show up on the stat sheet but I really do think our zone defense took some huge steps forward. I think we, I actually think we got a lot of good shots in that game. The wind and the sun didn't, didn't agree, and the overall numbers didn't agree. But I think it really helped us because we are going to see some zone this year. And, you know, to keep, like you said, guys like Chase and Xavier and Jamal out of the paint. And I think concept-wise, we've really progressed, and I think that'll benefit us in the long run. Hey, Mark, let's talk a little bit about the uh, the schedule over the holidays. And, again, we'll uh, have you on next week. But you guys, after Saturday night against USD, you've got a game uh, early next week against Point Loma Nazarene at Viejas. And then you guys go to a tournament on the 22nd. You've got USF, I believe, in the first game. Is that correct? That's right. we got a good USF team that beat St. John's pretty handily. Uh, very well coached by Rex Walters and Dwayne Poli Sr., who is on that staff, who's a great basketball mind and a great friend of the Aztecs. So there'll be a little family rivalry going on in that one. And then uh, are you gu- you're guaranteed two games over there. You- you'd play, uh, if you win that first game, you play the winner of Ole Miss, Indiana State? Yes, two good teams. Indiana State took New Mexico to overtime. Uh, Mississippi was undefeated, I think, until a recent loss to a good Middle Tennessee team. Uh, and then we actually would get a third game, Coach, if we were fortunate enough to win both. The favorite in the other side of the bracket would be the mighty Arizona Wildcats. So, obviously, we'd have to do our job and they'd have to do theirs. That'd be a fun one to play. Miami of Florida is also in that side of the bracket. is very good and knocking on the door of the top 25. So, it's a good field. Yeah, you guys would end up, if you ended up playing that third game and it would be on the 24th, you guys would be flying in about the same time as Santa Claus. Yeah, you know, my beautiful bride and I are going to take an extra day in Hawaii, Coach. We're going to relax and put our feet up on some Chase Lounge chairs and sit by the pool and hopefully celebrate a couple wins. So you're going to be in Hawaii on Christmas? Yes, sir. Sounds good. That, that That's different. Yeah, exactly. It's, I, I think the only other better place in the world than Hawaii would be San Diego, but we're going to swap 
beautiful coast for beautiful coast. Well, you know what? That's because you're you're one of those young and up and coming assistant coaches in college basketball that you know is on the cutting edge. And I got to take care of my wife. Coach, she, she deals with so much for me from uh, September to March. I think the least I can do is a couple of days in Hawaii. Hey, is there ever a time uh, that, I mean, you're a fairly uh, uh, young uh, married couple. Uh, is there ever a time where she just doesn't want to see a basketball game on TV? <laughs> I think I'm one of the lucky ones, Coach. We, we come home from our games, and sometimes we watch the film, and then all of a sudden I'll come home from practice, and she'll have the UNLV Cal game on, so – I think I picked right. I think you trained her right uh, as well. <laughs> That's good stuff right there. Hey, I wanted to ask you, you know, I was thinking about it tonight when I was uh, listening to the end of the USD game, and I was just kind of thinking about your upbringing. You know, your dad started out as a high school basketball coach, uh, English teacher, if I'm not mistaken. And, uh, you know, here's little Mark Fisher, you know, uh, going out to University of Michigan. Dad's an assistant, eventually becomes the head coach. What was it like going to practice and being around guys like Chris Weber and Jalen Rose? It's something you'll never forget, Coach. I mean, we would have been as happy as, as we are right now as a family if Coach would have stayed and been the head coach of Rich, Rich East High School his whole life. You know, but Coach took a chance and went to college, and it kind of really special, and a lot of that was luck, which we're all well aware of and understand, and I'm just so fortunate to grow up and go to practice and, you know, get made fun of by Jalen Rose and Chris Weber and some phenomenal memories. And in Europe, walking around uh, Venice, Italy with Jalen Rose with his arm around me talking about life. So I could spit a lot of stories to you, Coach, about how wonderful it was getting to know those guys. They truly are wonderful people that we still have relationships with now. But I had such a fortunate upbringing, and I'm very aware of that. And we'll get into that a little bit more uh, later in the year because we got a lot of segments to go uh, this year, my friend. Hey, good luck on Saturday night. We'll catch up with you early next week. Uh, uh, and I'm not sure exactly when we're going to have you on because I think you guys are uh, playing on Tuesday night. So we'll figure it out maybe Wednesday night after the game. That sounds good. Always a pleasure, Coach. All right, Mark. Have a great week. Good luck. Thank you, sir.